I wanted to show you the progress on my battery heating system. Uh, the five boxes that had the um, heating pads from Warmly, uh, Warmly Yours. I thought I'd just show you the um, control box that I've uh, made where all the five different mats come into it. Also do a test on the system for you. I've done it once already and everything worked just fine. So I'm just going to show you how the thermostat and everything on that works. I just wanted to show you uh, what it looks like inside this uh, battery box, heater junction box that I've made here. Um, I've inserted a box, you know, a plastic box inside there just to hold this in position. This cover just goes on over, over this and jiggles into position basically like that and then screws down onto that plastic box inside there. But in here I just have a protective piece of plastic um, to protect the terminals, which are all there, which help connect each individual uh, mat. I've got five of them. I've got done it like this. I've got the um, Mats numbered basically A, B, C, D, and E, and then A, B, C, D, and E. I've got the neutral and the live terminals going into those, and uh, that's how I've divided up all the grounds tie together of the sheathed wire. So they, they all tie together, and that's why I have this because of these bare wires here. That's why I have this protection cover just in there so that I can fold everything up against it. Like this. And then there will be no contact with the live wires. And obviously I just have a, a tail of with a plug on the end of it so I can plug into an extension cable. As if there is a fault with one of the mats I can disconnect it uh, and isolate it or you know then service it basically. So I think that's going to work quite well for me. And it keeps it all neat and tidy. They are a jumble of wires. has a few pins on the back here that have to slot in. The um, sensor goes into here from the back. Slots in and then there's a little tiny screw <coughs> underneath here. Which locks it in. So here we are in the rear of the car, in the trunk. Um, I've got my main service switch there, the guest switch, and then I have my little box for the for my Ziva fuel gauge, and then also the uh, control uh, panel for the for the battery box heaters. Uh, as you can see, I've got the charger over on the other side there, and then under this. Uh, Pad here, I've got all my batteries. So this is where my uh, front battery box is, um, and with the heating element that had the wires folded over each other. I know that uh, a couple of viewers were a little concerned about that, and that they would uh, start melting and uh, causing all sorts of problems. But uh, on my first test, nothing happened, and I can keep an eye on the wires down in here. There's been no melting, nothing. Uh, these wires, these resistive wires, are limited um, to a certain temperature anyway. They are for underfloor heating. They put them under carpet sometimes. So uh, I'm sure that they, they squawk a lot about uh, safety just due to liabilities. Uh, it's the world that we live in these days. Anyway, they seem to be holding up just fine, uh, as I said. 
the thermostat will only go up to 104 degrees Fahrenheit and um, all I'm going to be using this for is warming the boxes, keeping them above freezing during the winter so I probably won't even have it set more than say 60 degrees during the winter and it's only going to be plugged in and on during uh, during a charge mode so that is the plan. I think that uh, even plugging this uh, heater set up here into a, one of those strips that has a GFI um, capability so if it spotted a ground fault it would uh, shut the whole thing off. I think that would probably probably work quite well as well as a safety as a safety measure. So there's an on off switch here and it goes through a little test cycle. And then it says uh, what the temperature of the box is, is at at the moment, 56 degrees Fahrenheit. And then you uh, can put this light on so you can see clearly if it's a dark night. And then you pop up, pop up or down the temperature um, to whatever setting you want. I, I, on the last test I did it to 104 degrees, which is the maximum Fahrenheit. And then it just shows that all those bars there show that it's uh, engaged, that it's turned on. And that's it. And um, it takes a few hours for it to come up to full temperature. And the max that it showed that it went up to um, was 105 degrees, because obviously the elements heated it up and then there was a certain amount of uh, heat. Um, it took its time to get to the thermostat itself, or to the, uh, the, the sensor, put it that way. And I had no issues, so I'm going to do the test again so that you can all see it. Coming up to two hours later, it's at 76 degrees Fahrenheit. Here we are five hours later, and it's now at 104 degrees Fahrenheit. It's already started cutting back. It's on uh, the full power. is usually five of those little uh, markings there. It's back down to three, so it's already cutting back on its power. And... Uh, as I said before I tried it, it went up to 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Everything here is slightly warmer. Uh, there's no melting going on. Absolutely fine. So what I envision with these uh, uh, resistive wire heated battery boxes is, uh, you know, obviously the thing is to watch out for is, is the wear of the uh, wire actually rubbing up against the batteries and the constant moving of a vehicle. But I envision at some point, you know, th this can be developed and be, you know, quite a reliable form of heating. It's certainly cheap enough. And, um, and who knows, it might even be able to be heated off the pack too if one had to do that. I don't think there's ever any need to do such a thing because once the, the batteries have warmed up, there's quite a lot of thermal mass there and these will stay warm as I've, you know, tried it out before. Um, they stayed warm for many hours after they had been heated. And uh, really, the amount of use that I'm going to be using the car, I'm going to you know, maybe drive around a little bit, be away for a few hours, then come back and charge it up. It's certainly not going to be a big, big problem with the, the, the batteries being too cold. Um, so I certainly think uh, there's a future for this, even if uh, the wear and tear on them and in the boxes, as, the, as I've made them at the moment, is, is possibly uh, open to a little bit of, uh, you know, maybe abrasion and maybe they'll... The, the, the sheathing will be worn through or something like that. But uh, that can easily be sorted out, I'm sure, with a little bit more thought in going into the boxes. So I'm pretty excited about it.